For my message uh, this morning, I would like to read a couple of verses from Luke chapter 8, verses 38 through 39. Luke chapter 8, verses 38 through 39. And the word of God says the following. Now the man from whom the demons had departed begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the city what great things Jesus had done for him. Amen. Now, today, I would like to take a break from my mini-series on the marks of a Christian. And I would like to share a couple of things from uh, this familiar story. I'm sure most of you have heard it multiple times, have read it multiple times, uh, about how Jesus heals a a demon-possessed man And there are a few details that I thought I would share with you. Uh, First of all, when Jesus shared with him, uh, asked him what's his name, the demon answers, legion. That is, there were many. And um, once Jesus uh, liberated him, the evil spirits, the demons, went into a herd of pigs, swine, and they went for a swim. And... There's something interesting that I would like to share with you that some commentators call this man the first missionary. And I would like to talk this morning about our team here at Agape, the passion of this first missionary. What made him passionate about what God has done for him? What made him passionate to share what God has done for him? And I looked up passion in the dictionary and I uh, found... um, a working definition, and passion is defined as an intense feeling, a strong feeling, a great devotion, and intense conviction. Okay, up to here is just nice things, right? But this, the last part of the, the definition is very important for us. It's not just that intense feeling, that strong feeling, that devotion, that conviction. What's important about those is that they fuel or motivate us towards compelling action. It's not enough to have that strong feeling in your heart. It's not enough to have that conviction in your heart. You have to do something about it. And that's where passion comes in. You have to do something. You have to work. You have to take action. And the Bible also uses the word zeal when it talks about passion, about being passionate. And this word implies an energetic, unflag- unflagging pursuit of a name or devotion to a cause. Okay, nothing will stop you. When you have passion, and in our case, when you have passion for God, there's nothing that will stop you. So I would like to stop at three things, three root causes of what brings up about that passion in you. Passion to share what God has done for you. Passion to share your story with other people. And the first thing that I notice in this passage is that passion comes from an encounter with Jesus. Passion comes from an encounter with Jesus. And I would like to read a few verses that I haven't read from this passage from Luke 8, uh, verses 27 through 30. And the Word of God says, when, And when he stepped out on land, there met him, a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time. And he wore no clothes, nor did he live in a house, but in tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for it had often had seized him, and he was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles. And he broke the bonds and was driven by them into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, What is your name? And he said, Legion, because many demons had entered him. An encounter with Jesus. And what I found interesting about this passage, this is not the normal situation. If you were to mad this man naked, out of his mind, would you have stopped and have a nice, civilized conversation with him? 
more likely not. But Jesus stopped and started talking to him and showed him respect. Even though the situation was normal, Jesus had a normal conversation. He asked him about his name. Truth be told, the man did not answer, the demons answer, but Jesus tried to have a conversation with him. And I would like to take you back to your first encounter with Jesus. Do you remember the first time Jesus spoke to you? Do you remember the words that he said to you? I still remember the love that I felt hearing him speak to me. I still remember the joy, the happiness. I still remember the hope from when Jesus first spoke to me. And I would like you to go down memory lane because I know most of you here, the majority of you here, have had at least one encounter with Jesus. And in order for us to be passionate for God, to be passionate about sharing his word, to be passionate about doing his work, we have to remember where we started. Remember that first encounter. And I'm sure that's going to light, light up that fire in your belly, that fire in your heart to share the gospel because you want people around you to have the same experience you had. You want people around you, your neighbors, your coworkers, your friends, your family members to be saved just like you were saved. And that's why I want you to do this exercise and go back and remember when was the first time you encountered Jesus and how did you feel about it? Because that's going to light up the passion within your heart. And I pray that God will remind you of that encounter and light up, rekindle that fire within your heart. Second, passion comes as a, res as a result of being transformed by God. Comes from God making the impossible possible in your life. And we already read a couple of these verses that talk about the state of the man before he met Jesus. Before he met Jesus, he was naked. Had no home. Uh, when he saw Jesus, he was afraid. He was afraid of the presence of God. And the word of God says he cried out. He shrieked. He fell down. He was possessed by demons. He was chained. And more importantly, he was out of his mind. That was all before he met Jesus. And then after he met Jesus, verse 35 from Luke 8. Then they went out to see what had happened and came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had, de had departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. Before he was naked, now he was clothed. Before he was afraid of God, he was afraid the son of, of the Son of God. Now he's quietly sitting at the feet of Jesus. Before he was out of his mind, possessed by demons, but now he is perfectly sane. The word of God says, in his right mind. Jesus transformed him. And I would like you to think about what Jesus has done for you. Think of the time when you started with Jesus, where you were and where you are now. How did you change? from when he saved you, from when he forgave you, from when he showed his love by restoring your relationship with God. How did he transform you? How did he change you? You know, you might say, oh, I've been, sunt pocăit de 30 de ani. Yes, but how did he change you during those 30 years? Because I'm sure you had multiple encounters during those 30 years with Jesus. And what's important, not only did he transform you, but he gave you peace. He gave you joy. And I know even though you might be going through trials, through tribulations, what happens in the middle of trial and tribulation, you have joy. You have peace. Because Jesus Christ is the one that gives you peace. Is the one that gives you joy. 
And the question then is, why did he change you? Why did he transform you? And that's going to lead us to the last point of my message. Passion comes as a result of God's specific call for your life. Passion comes as a result of God's specific call for your life. And that's the, the two verses that I read to start my message, and I would like to reread them to you. Now, the man from whom the demons had departed beg him that he might be with him. Another translation says, beg him that he might go with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things God had done for him. He wanted to join Jesus. He wanted to join that traveling group and move around with Jesus. But Jesus had something else in mind for him. Had a more specific call. Some of us are called to go to Africa, to India, to whatever part of the world. Some of us are called to be on stage. But some of us are called to work within our families. Some of us are called to work within our workplaces. Some of us are called to work within a small, you know, small group of people, our friends, our closest friends. We are called to tell those closest to us what Jesus has done for us. And for that, we have specific, specific gifts. God entrusted us with specific gifts. He designed us in a certain way in order for us to respond to this call of God. And for that, I would like to share with you an illustration. There was this young camel that came to his mom and had a series of questions like some of your kids might have for you. And the first one was, Mom, what have I got such big, fat, uh, flat feet? And the mom re replied, Well, my darling, in the desert, you need these big, flat feet because sand is soft and these feet help us keep stable. Happy with the answer, went away and then came back the, little, the young camel and asked again, Mom, why have I got such big eyela eyelashes? And she replied, well, darling, in the desert, there's a lot of wind and um, sand gets thrown around about in the air. And we need these big eyelashes to stop the sand from getting into our eyes. And then the kid come, came, came, the young camel came back again. Mom, why have I got a hump back? And mom replied, Darling, in the desert we are sometimes without water for a long time. We have got the hump because it is designed to store a lot of water and it helps us survive in the desert. The young camel went away and then came back with one final answer, one final question. Mom, I now know why I have got big feet and long eyelashes and a hump, but can you tell me why we live in this zoo? Might be funny, but that's so true about many of us. Why aren't you passionate about what God has done for you is because you're not in the right place. God designed you in a certain way. God prepared you for what wor good works he had in plan for you. But you're not happy with the way God designed you and say, you know, how come I'm not up front here singing with the worship band? How come I'm, I'm not up front preaching? I need to be seen. I need to be heard. I need to be whatever else we say we need to be. And when we do that, it doesn't matter that God designed us for the desert and we end up living in the zoo or whatever else God designed us for. We're not going to be passionate for what God has called us to do. And I would like you to remember, you had multiple encounters with God. 
we had multiple encounters with God. Do you still feel his words of love? Do you still feel that, you know, that those words of passion that he poured into your heart? And think about how you felt in his presence when, you know, the Holy Spirit came upon you. When God's presence came upon you, when his love came pouring down, how did you feel? And I pray God rekindle that fire. Because we want to be passionate about you. But we have to remember where we, it all started. That encounter with God. We need to remember that God intervened in our lives. That God worked in our lives. And as Christians, we shouldn't believe in luck. We shouldn't believe in coincidences. We should see the hand of God working in our lives. And how he transforms us. How he changes us. And... He does all of that because he has a purpose for you. He has a calling for you. He wants to share your story. He wants to share what he has done in your life. You, he wants you to share with those around you. And you have to do that according to your specific calling. You cannot take somebody else's place. The gifts God gave you is because he has something specific in mind for you. And I pray this morning that God will speak to you. That God will remind you of your encounters with him. That God will remind you of how he worked in your life. But more than that, I pray that God will speak to you and share with you his specific call for your life. So that you can be motivated. So that you can be passionate about what God has done in your life. God help us all. Amen.